placement of the first volley in singles. Now if the ball is low or you're too far back, I highly recommend you go right back to where the return came from. Now, if you go to the open court and the ball sits up, remember when you hit the net you have to cover down the line first, so you're going to have to shift to the other side. Momentum will make it very difficult for you to now come back to co cover a cross court passing shot. Now if the ball is high and you can stick it, then that's when you want to go to the open court. So if the ball does go back, your opponent's reaching and gives you a second easy volley. Now another thing to consider is which side is the weaker side. So you may want to volley right to that weaker, weaker shot right away, and that way you get an easy ball, it sits up and you look to finish, finish immediately. So again, you want to make them pass with the side that don't want to hit. Now in my own experience, I find if I'm getting passed, I like to just hit the first volley right back to where it came from. Often that works because you're already set up to cover down the line, you're on the same side as the ball, and also your opponent is trying to get back to the center, so now they've got to come back, so you're hitting back behind them, so they're all going to be more off balance. Generally when you go to the open court, they're going to be running and moving in that direction, so it's much easier for them to hit the passing shot if you cannot effectively stick the ball. Now remember, with any strategy, you may have to adjust and find the option that works best for you based on each situation and based on each opponent that you play. Now let's take a look at a few examples in practice. Now in this first example, the ball is going to go high, but I'm going to be too far back to have the strength to effectively stick it to the open court. So I'm going to choose to go right back at my opponent and then close the net. So for purposes to work on the footwork, I'm just going to shatter swing the serve and work the three steps. One, two, three. So see after the first volley I closed in and then I could finish on the second shot. Now in that example the feed was lower than what I expected but still I was too far back to really stick it so I went right back at him. Now we'll take a look at the higher ball. One, two, three. So see how I cl closed in after the first volley. So much closer in a better position to now effectively stick to the open court. Now I'm going to look at the low one. So I'm going to go right back at my opponent. Shadow swing. One, two, three. And look to finish. Now in this example, now unless you have a real cannon or in this instance your opponent may be cheating over, covering the backhand, can take the ball out wide. Now if they do get there and happen to hit a, a very acute angle, you can actually use the drop volley because it's low and hit the ball up the line to counter that. It's almost like an emergency situation and actually a shot I enjoy pulling off when pulled wide and low, right? Or wide and stretched. And that's how you can deal with a ball being on the stretch very close to the net and you're out of options. You can use that drop volley, take pace off the ball with the understanding that your opponent is way off the court. Now one thing you need to be aware of is your opponent may counter by hitting a lob if you're coming in a lot, serving and volleying a lot. So remember it's one, two, three and then if you anticipate the lob you want to get back for the overhead. One, two, three. And then you finish with the overhead. We now offer one day OTI serve clinics where an OTI certified instructor helps you transform your serve several times per year in Florida, California as well as other locations. For more information on upcoming serve clinics click the link inside this video right now.